Hello once again my friends and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel looks to answer any and all questions you may have. My name is Jared Bronstein and I'll be your host for this one. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel, ring that bell so you can always be notified of our videos, and of course drop us some comments below with other questions you'd like answers to. I'll be responding to some comments from a previous video at the end of this one, but for now, let's jump right in. Now it's no secret dinosaurs once ruled the earth. They were big, strong, scary, and it seemed like they were at the top of the food chain. Well, depends which ones, but it seemed like they were the ones to be feared, not fearing. But when it comes to the Dinosuchus, it's believed they actually ate some dinosaurs, as well as other land creatures, fish, and shellfish. These things were believed to grow up to 33 feet in length, weighed anywhere between 5 to 10 tons, and are very similar to that of the Sarcosuchus, which is currently believed to be the largest crocodile that ever lived, weighing up to 15 tons and 40 feet in length. So today we are asking, what if the Dinosuchus didn't go extinct? Well for starters, I will say the world wouldn't end. I know a lot of you guys seem to think that's a common theme on this channel, and it usually is the case if catastrophic things happen to Earth, such as Earth going into the sun, another planet colliding with Earth, or if Earth lost all of its oxygen. So you could breathe easy knowing if these guys didn't go extinct, you'd probably still be okay. I mean, it really depends where you live. So let's get into that. It's commonly believed the Dinosuchus lived in rivers in North America, but not the North America we live in. Back before our time, the Western Interior Seaway, also referred to as the Cretaceous Seaway, or the North American Inland Sea, was a body of water that split two islands. To give you an idea, when these things roamed the waters, the Western Interior Seaway literally split parts of what we now know as the United States and Canada in half. Part of Alberta and majority of Saskatchewan were submerged in water. Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Kansas, Nebraska, and South and North Dakota were also all submerged. Majority of Texas would have been underwater as well. And that's exactly where these things lived. Now of course, these crocs wouldn't necessarily live in the middle of massive land such as Colorado or New Mexico, because there most likely aren't bodies of water big enough to handle them. So if they were to adapt, they'd most likely reside on the coast of California all the way up to British Columbia. There is the possibility some could live in larger lakes, like Salt Lake, however I'm not sure how they'd be able to cross all that land such as the deserts of Nevada. It's also fair to mention a handful could live in the Gulf of Mexico, so those living along the coast could also be affected. I mean Florida has their fair share of crocs, so who's to say their long lost relative wouldn't be able to join them? Of course, these things roaming the waters could not only cause trouble for some locals, but fishermen and any shipping routes that use those coastlines. It could also change the food chain in the water, considering how these things were believed to take down the likes of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, who was believed to be the king of land. I mean with rigid sharp teeth and armored skin, I could see how the Dinosuchus would be able to put up quite a fight with a T-Rex. Regardless of who were to win the fight, I know I'd pay to watch, it'd be one hell of a show. But again, these things roaming large bodies of water wouldn't necessarily change much of our day to day lives, especially those living in the more central states. I mean, the idea of a 30 foot crocodile showing up on a golf course in Florida is pretty scary, but I don't play golf, so I don't have much to worry about. But for the sake of this video, because it is of course hypothetical, Let's also look at the possibility of these things adapting to living in smaller bodies of water compared to the oceans, such as the Mississippi River, the Missouri River, and the Colorado and Columbia Rivers. Well then this could pose a threat to those living anywhere near the water, especially considering how those things would be just fine roaming the land for periods of time. It's also possible these things could adapt and live in some of the Great Lakes, such as Huron, Ontario, and Superior, which would definitely be problematic for me, who lives in Toronto, not too far from the water. If this was the case, people living in towns, cities, and states that could be affected by these things would have to relocate. I mean, if you look outside and see a 30 foot croc sitting on your lawn, I could promise there's no animal control that could help out. But eventually, the governments, more specifically the US and Canada, assuming that's where these things would live, might have to invest in containing these creatures. This of course, would cost millions upon millions of dollars. Studying the animals, figuring out ways to capture them if they're putting people in dangerous situations, and of course, finding ways to stop them from getting in contact with our society in general. Now of course, we also have to look at it from the perspective of if they'd go extinct again. Depending where they live, food could be quite scarce for these large animals. There's only so many fish, turtles, sharks, or whatever else these things would eat that live in certain areas before their population would completely die out. In a sense, these creatures could potentially make themselves go extinct due to overeating and lack of a population for food. Again, just a hypothetical theory, but this entire video is hypothetical, so why not look at it from all angles possible? Even if these things preyed on humans by the coast, I don't think a 6 foot, 200 pound adult would be enough to feist the appetite of a 30 foot, 10,000 pound croc. 
Maybe 10 humans. And that's why I'll never go swimming or in a boat ever again. It's some really serious, scary stuff. But come to think of it, before you guys do start to worry, and before I work myself up any more than I already have, let me reiterate the question here. What if the Dinosuchus didn't go extinct? It's been extinct for over 73 million years, and its first fossils weren't found until the 1850s. I can promise you these things are not a threat to anyone, anywhere. Crocs, on the other hand, well, those are very real and dangerous, so I'd recommend steering clear. Now, before we wrap up this video, let's respond to some comments from the video, what if hammerhead sharks went extinct? Banked Soil Jr. said, imagine if Thor's calls his hammer and a hammerhead shark floats to his hand. <laughs> I included that comment because I thought it was very funny and just the idea of Thor holding a hammerhead shark and just hitting people with it. I think that could be a great spin-off. So I think someone needs to get in touch with Marvel and we gotta make this happen ASAP. Conan Laugren, I'm really sorry if I said your name wrong, said, I'd love dinosaurs to be back only to be our protectors. That would be great, but there's absolutely no guarantees. I mean, they're much, much bigger than us. And I think maybe we should uh, work on having lions protect us before we try to focus on dinosaurs, which are much, much bigger, stronger, and scarier. I don't know. Just a thought. As always, I would love to hear from you guys, so please do drop us some comments down below of how you would feel if the Dinosuchus didn't go extinct. Where would you guys live? Would you be comfortable living near the water or would you be like right in Central America, nowhere near any bodies of water? I would probably just move to Europe or something. I don't know. <laughs> As always, I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you let us know by giving it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and of course, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that button as well as that bell so you get notified when we post more videos. Also, be sure to drop us some comments down below with some questions you guys want answers to, and we'll see you guys in the next one.